بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان دس ویڈیو آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکرائب دی ٹائپس آف نیورو ٹرانسمیٹرس اینڈ ریسیپٹرس ان دی نروس سسٹم لیٹس بگن نیورو ٹرانسمیٹرس آر انڈوجنس کیمیکلس دیٹ ٹرانسمیٹ سگنلس فرام اے نیوران ٹو اے ٹارگیٹ سیل اکراس اے سائن ایپس Only some neurons produce and release only one kind of neurotransmitter. Most neurons make two or more neurotransmitters and may release one or more at any given time. The coexistence of more than one neurotransmitter makes it possible for the cell to exert several influences at the same time. Neurotransmitters are grouped into several chemical classes based on the molecular structure. The major types of neurotransmitters include acetylcholine, amino acids, biogenic amines and peptides. Acetylcholine was the first neurotransmitter identified. It is released at the neuromuscular junction and cholinergic fibers of the autonomic nervous system. The cholinergic synapses are also widely distributed throughout the brain. Once released, acetylcholine binds to postsynaptic receptors and is degraded by the enzyme acetylcholine esterase. The cholinergic system has two types of receptors, the nicotinic and the muscarinic. These are named for the drugs that interact with the cholinergic receptor in addition to acetylcholine. Nicotine will bind to the nicotinic receptor and activate it. Muscarine, a product of certain toxic mushrooms, will bind to the muscarinic receptor. Nicotinic receptors are found in the neuromuscular junction, in several areas of the brain, as well as in the autonomic ganglia. Muscarinic receptors are found in several areas of the brain, smooth muscles and glands. The amino acid neurotransmitters include glutamate, gamma amino butyric acid and glycine. Each amino acid neurotransmitter is part of its own system, namely the glutamatergic, GABAergic and glycinergic systems. They have their own receptors and do not interact with each other. Amino acid neurotransmitters are eliminated from the synapse by reuptake, mostly through a pump in the presynaptic membrane or sometimes in a neighboring glial cell. Then it can be repackaged in the vesicles and released again. The most prevalent neurotransmitter in the human brain is glutamate, which promotes excitatory effects. The next most prevalent is GABA, which is inhibitory at more than 90% of the synapses that do not use glutamate. The biogenic amines are enzymatically made from the amino acids. They no longer have carboxyl groups and are therefore no longer classified as amino acids. Serotonin is made from tryptophan. It is the basis of the serotonergic system, which has its own specific receptors. Serotonin is transported back into the presynaptic cell for repackaging. Other biogenic amines are made from tyrosine, 
that include dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. Dopamine is part of its own system, the dopaminergic system, which has dopamine receptors. Dopamine is removed from the synapse by transport proteins in the presynaptic cell membrane. Norepinephrine and epinephrine belong to the adrenergic neurotransmitter system. The two molecules are very similar and bind to the same receptor which, is, which are referred to as alpha and beta receptors. Epinephrine is also known as adrenaline and norepinephrine is sometimes referred to as noradrenaline. The adrenal gland produces epinephrine and norepinephrine to be released into the bloodstream as hormones. Norepinephrine and epinephrine are also transported back into the presynaptic cell. Biogenic amines are widely distributed in the brain where they play a role in emotional behavior and help in regulating the biological clocks. Additionally, some motor neurons of the autonomic nervous system release norepinephrine. Norepinephrine, dopamine and histamine can be excitatory or inhibitory depending on the receptor type. Addictive drugs such as cocaine and amphetamine exert their effects primarily on the dopamine system. While addictive opiates and functional analogs of opiate peptides can regulate dopamine levels. A neuropeptide is a neurotransmitter molecule made up of chains of amino acids connected by peptide bonds. This is what a protein is, but the term protein implies a certain length to the molecule. Some neuropeptides are quite short, such as met and cephalin, which is 5 amino acids long. Others are long, such as beta endorphin, which is 31 amino acids long. Neuropeptides are often released at synapses in combination with other neurotransmitters. They often act as hormones in other systems of the body such as vasoactive intestinal peptide or substance P. Neuropeptides such as substance P and endorphins are strings of amino acids that are important in the mediation of pain signals. Endorphins are released in the so-called runner's high. A runner's high is a brief, deeply relaxing state with a sense of extreme joy or delight. In this case, it occurs after intense or lengthy exercise. Encephalin activity increases dramatically in pregnant women during labor. There is also evidence that neuropeptides such as gut brain peptides are produced by non neural tissues in the gastrointestinal tract. The important thing to remember about neurotransmitters and signaling mole chemicals is that their effects are entirely dependent on the activation of receptors. The postsynaptic cell surface receptors are classified into two categories, ionotropic and metabotropic. The ionotropic receptors are ligand gated ion channels that open or close in response to binding of a chemical messenger such as a neurotransmitter. 
the neurotransmitter binds on a unique portion of the receptor protein complexes which is different from the ion pore. The opening and closing of ion channel is regulated by a neurotransmitter and is usually very selective to one or more ions such as potassium, sodium, calcium or chloride. The prototypic uh, ligand-gated ion channel is the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. It has two binding sites for acetylcholine. Binding of acetylcholine alters the receptor's configuration and causes an internal pore to open. This pore allows sodium ions to flow down their electrochemical gradient into the cell. Activation of ionotropic receptors is believed to produce an immediate but short-lived response on the postsynaptic cell. A metabotropic receptor involves a complex of proteins that result in metabolic changes within the cell. The metabotropic receptor complex includes a transmembrane receptor protein and an effector protein. Metabotropic receptors use signal transduction mechanisms to activate a series of intracellular events using second messenger molecules. In signal transduction, the neurotransmitter referred to as the first messenger binds to the receptor protein on the extracellular surface of the cell. This activates a G protein on the intracellular side of the receptor. The G protein is a guanosine triphosphate hydrolase that physically moves to activate the effector protein. An effector protein is an enzyme that catalyzes the generation of a new molecule which acts as the intracellular mediator or the second messenger. Examples of metabotropic receptors include glutamate receptors, muscarinic acetylcholine receptors, GABA receptors, most ser serotonin receptors, adrenergic receptors and receptors for histamine, dopamine and neuropeptides. Activation of postsynaptic cell by metabotropic receptors take much longer time. But the effects on the activity of the postsynaptic cell are prolonged and widespread. Different receptors use different second messengers. Two common examples of second messengers are cyclic adenosine monophosphate, cyclic AMP, and inositol triphosphate, IP3. The enzyme adenylate cyclase is an example of an effector protein that makes cyclic AMP. Phospholipase C is the enzyme that makes IP3. Second messengers, after they are produced by the effector protein, cause metabolic changes within the cell. These changes are most likely the activation of other enzymes in the cell. In neurons, they often modify ion channels, either opening or closing them. These enzymes can also cause changes in the cell, such as activation of the genes in the nucleus and therefore the increased synthesis of protein. In neurons, 
these kinds of changes are often the basis of stronger connection between cells at the synapse and may be the basis of learning and memory. Thanks for watching and listening. Do share this video with your friends and colleagues. If you like this video, do subscribe to this channel for watching more videos.